It's time for our fails from, I believe everyone's fails from Extreme Rules. Uh, welcome to Aftermath Digital TV, everyone. This is probably one of my favorite parts of our show is when we have our wins, when we have our fails, and we get to talk about everything we liked or disliked from the week that was. But this particular stream, I think all of us have something from Extreme Rules, as the guys would say, you dream rules. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm starting to finally get it. And Nug, you're going to start us off. Uh, the whole thing. No. Um, no, but you know what? Maybe we start off with that because a lot of people said, you know, it actually was a horror show for all the wrong yeah, reasons. <laughs> and I think that's like from now on, don't tagline your event a thing that is like a bad thing. Like if you're going to call it a horror show, it's only going to get compared to that. I don't call it the best thing ever, and then it's going to fall flat. Uh, but the horror show was just that. And I'll say this. It is no fault of the in-ring performers. Everybody in the ring did an excellent job. The, the wrestling, the athleticism, it was all on point. However, <laughs> the eyeball match was a giant fail for me. Uh, had that stipulation not been on it, and then someone's eye had popped out, I think it would have been a much bigger surprise and a lot more extreme. But instead, you promised eyeball, you gave us eyeball. And you also gave us vomit, which I guess distracted from the eyeball. Was it a vomit for an eye match? It's a very odd stipulation to put on a match, to promise for a match. And at no fault of the guys in the ring, both Ray and Seth did an mm. excellent job in that match but the stipulations of it really took away from what was going on. I found the goofiness and the silliness of the extreme uh, stipulations overall, but particularly for that match, really took me out of the whole thing. Well, I still, how many days has it been since the pay-per-view? I'm still on social media and I still see the image of the eye, yeah. <laughs> the eyeball. I think that's, that went viral. Yeah. No, yeah. but and there is the problem. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not like I wanted to actually see on 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 live pay per view somebody's eye pop out of their head. Right. But that's kind of what was alluded to and almost promised. It was, and we didn't really see the end conclusion. All we heard was Samoa Joe yell, "It's out." Ooh. Oh well, we saw. There's a picture of Ray on the ground. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. the one I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, exactly. The candy eyeball. <laughs> but you're but you're right. Now the the grossest thing about the entire match was watching Seth Rollins up Chuck at ringside, mm -hmm. you, and, and you're again you were correct in saying that the guys worked so hard and had what if you had labeled it a hardcore no rules unsanctioned whatever you want anything to label else. whatever you labeled that match that was a really good match yeah and what the match suffered from the ending the finish is what basically took away from what was a really a good match. Which, Jimmy, goes into our fails. I'm going to start off with mine first. Uh, it, was, it was the ending to the Raw Women's Championship because I believe Sasha and Asuka did an incredible. Like, I don't want to get too much into it because that's not to give away my win, but that is my win. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Why does Bailey come in at the end, put a referee's jersey on, and count the pin? Uh, I, I, I didn't even want Bailey in that. I said, I was thinking Asuka and, and, and Sasha Banks are holding their own so well, maybe match of the night. And next thing you know, Bailey runs in in a referee jersey and, you know, steals the show. And in that moment, you thought that they had like, you know, all the titles in the bag, which obviously isn't the case um, after Monday Night Raw. But man, I just was like, why? Uh, I thought Asuka and Sasha did such a good job and the ending for that, like I was so blown away by the two of them together and their chemistry that when that happened, I was like, come on, you know, I just didn't love it. And I still don't love it after Monday Night Raw, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> no, I, t I totally agree with that. I, I, again, it, similar to the Ray and Seth Rollins match, both women had a really good match going it through that. They had, they, like you said, they had great chemistry. Yeah. Everything was clicking. It was working. And then the ending of the match took away, almost took all that away because that, yeah. you know, anyway. But, but, you know, there's something to be said where Monday Night Raw hasn't been a ton of interesting things to tune into where there hasn't been stuff to watch. That happened, and we wanted to find out what was going to happen. True. So I understand that, that in the ending in that way. But for Bailey to throw the ref shirt, first of all, the ref to 
the poor ref did me. I don't know if you've oh. ever taken poison mist, but for the ref to get the mist and then to be de-shirted by Bailey, who then puts the shirt on and says, I'm the ref. And we all know, no, you're not the ref. And then she makes the count. They leave an Oscar, the announcers, nobody knows what's going on, utter confusion. And you could hear the joy of that match drop completely yes. for that moment. Everybody loved that match. It was an excellent wrestling match between two very capable yep. women. And it was completely, the rug got yanked out from under it by that garbage ending. Mm -hmm. and, and Nuggets, an excellent point bringing Jimmy into this. Jimmy, give us your opinion on, from a referee's perspective. Uh, oh, first of all, um, I don't want to get too political here with the, the, the spraying of the mist during these times, which I think may be too soon. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, I have been sprayed by mist before, if anybody remembers the legendary Killer Khan when he was oh. managed by Mr. Yes, the worst part about the mist is not being blinded temporarily. It's the next morning when you're getting on the plane and you can't get this green goop off. <laughs> <laughs> and people, people, people at security are looking at you funny and the stewardess think, are saying, should we isolate this guy somewhere else in the place? Anyway, um, getting back to the match itself. Again, I want stuff, and this goes into my fail. And it wasn't just this match and it wasn't just the Rey Mysterio match. It also in the Swamp match. The ending of matches is usually what the fan remembers most. And it is the, it's supposed to be the exclamation point on a complete picture a complete story a complete package mm -hmm. those endings uh in particular uh left question marks and i get it you want to tune in to find out what happens but at the same time you don't want to leave everybody completely confused and in the dark uh, the, the match with with the, the women where bailey puts on the shirt now you and i can assume that yes that is not the official ending of the match but there should have been something at least said at the pay-per-view this isn't the, this isn't the result this will be addressed tomorrow on raw or something like that but nothing was said it was left up in the air it was ambiguous and again left everybody scratching their head and it didn't make sense I all want i can to make think sense. of all i can think of is sunday night i got a text from my brother my nine-year-old nephew turned to him after the swamp fight and said so dad who's the champion? And he texted me that. And I said, the honest truth is, I don't even know if the title was on the line. Mm. Also, that wasn't a match. It was a swamp chat in yes. a chair. He was sitting in a chair and talking for, I don't know how long. And then they tried to drown each other and they did the horror movie credits come up, but then the hand comes out and then some more ending. So what I can gather from the end of, the sh of that swamp fight is that Braun Strowman is dead in a swamp and Bray Wyatt, the Fiend is back, but the Fiend may have eaten both Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman. <laughs> and then he also somehow breathes underwater. Like there's a lot of questions uh, about that match, but too many. It's okay to be like, oh, what's going to happen? Tune in next week, classic Batman style. But yeah. if you have, what's going to happen? Who's the champ? Are they alive? Are they dead? Is any of this real? Does any of it matter? Tune in. Like it's too much. And not no. every match should have that ending. No, you're right. And, and it, it, again, in the cinematic format of that match, there were elements of it that were actually entertaining, other than the five minutes of heavy breathing by Braun in a chair. But, uh, you, you know, again, it's, it's hampered by the fact that the cinematic matches, the standard bearer uh, is going to be the Undertaker, AJ Styles, Boneyard match, and everybody's going to expect that type of presentation. And I don't know if having that, looming over everybody's head is a good thing you know what i mean everybody's looking up to that expectation and it's going to be tough to to meet those standards well i feel like the entire wwe universe hopes that there's no sequel to this horror show so, I hope there's, there's always another. movie number two there's always movie number two Let's i hope there one. isn't another cinematic match <laughs> i hope they take a break and they don't do another one until christmas when they have a christmas match with bray wyatt against santa or they could have just had Freddy versus Jason. It would have been the same. Um, exactly. You know, and, and, and going back to the, to, to the women's situation, you know, Stephanie comes on Raw this week and says, hey, uh, Sasha, you didn't win that match, but Asuka, neither did you. But, that, but she didn't really say that, okay, Asuka is still your champion because she didn't lose. Because as far as I know, the only way to lose a title is pinfall, submission, or being stripped of the title. And then they're going to have a rematch next week to determine who is the rightful champion, which makes me think that 
the wording makes it sound like the the title is being held up until this match. So there's no champion. I don't know. It's it was confusing, yeah. anyways. Well, Aftermath TV fans, let us know what your fail was from last week. If it's from Extreme Rules, if it's, you know, outside of Extreme Rules, we want to know. Tweet us using the hashtag AskAftermath and then keep us posted and stay tuned to anything going out on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. We want to hear from you. Thanks for watching.